Hi there guys, Bizzleberry here with a patch 8.16 support tier list. Um, there have been a few changes overall in this whole patch, generally reducing the um, amount of damage that champions are doing in the uh, very early game. So things like Scorch, the damage portion of Airy, um, early um, burst damage of Electrocute has been nerfed. And there have been a few things in the domination tree, like cheap shot, that have also been nerfed. Um, but these really impact the first 10 minutes of the game. And the electrocute nerf or change is probably the best way to put it. There are going to be um, a couple of assassins that are going to be affected by this. In the support case, it's going to be Pike. He genuinely goes in, does a big burst amount of damage, and then retreats or tries to finish off. Now, with Electrocute cooldown being halved now, but the damage isn't halved, it's, I would say it's probably been reduced by about 33%. Overall, DPS on Electrocute is, is higher over a longer period of time early game. However, those one short burst moments will be slightly reduced with the Electrocute damage. So it honestly depends on, on someone like Pike or Bard or Zyra are the main things you're going to be taking, um, possibly taking Electrocute on. Um, it's, you're going to be, if you're going to be using Electrocute on a support, it's you're going to have to make sure that you proc it as much as you can, as often as you can, to get the most DPS value out of it. Um, so because of that, there are a few champions that have wiggled around on the list. Um, but as always, I'll show you guys the, the lower end and then work my way up. Also, my channel has been sponsored by Rocket. So if you're interested in buying any Rocket gear, you can actually save 10% off by using the code BIZWO at checkout. You can get the link in the description down below. Okay, right, let's start talking about the champions now. The C list is nothing crazy to there. I know there has been a Tom Kench, um... Tom Kench has been changed. The way the changes have happened, though, it seems that like Riot are trying to encourage people to play Tom Kench top more often. It's more focused around doing more damage to the enemy more often, rather than being about saving your allies. So I think he had some solo lane quality of life there. I think it seems that Riot are trying to pull away. Um, his use as a support, which is kind of weird because of how his ult works, but overall, this doesn't really change anything from bot lane, and in some cases, it kind of makes it a little bit worse. I know there's lots of people that come onto my stream, and they ask about Tarek, and sometimes they make um, fair arguments into why Tarek is viable. The problem is, is that overall, he's particularly weak. Um... Unless you land everything perfectly, his ult has um, large. You need to have large, like really good ante anticipation skills, basically, to be able to pull off a really, really nice ult on Tarek. And doing that in solo queue without being able to communicate with your teammates properly, it's incredibly difficult to do. It is very rewarding, but it is very, very, very difficult to do, even in top tier. I've had, um, for example, this week I've had, in my master games, I've had two Tarks, uh, one on my team, one on the enemy team, and both struggled heavily to use their ultimates properly, for example, and this is top tier play. So, I mean, the overall majority of you guys, I assume, are under master, so you're going to have even your struggle even, even more to land perfect ultimates. It is a very hard ability to land, and it's very hard to bounce as well. You got the uh, unusual suspects there. <laughs> you got the Malzahar and the Maokai and the Annie and the Zoe. They're all not really viable right now. Zoe received more nerfs now, so it's definitely going to be impossible to play Zoe support like viably, really in solo queue. Um, had some fun when um, at the start when she came out, but I don't think you can play Zoe support right now at all. Now you've got some more familiar of the champions here. We've had a lot of comments on stream about Sona. 
Um, she is, there's a lot of people defending her, but honestly, she's just incredibly weak. If you get out of silver, you'll know very quickly that she's not very good at all. Very, very weak, squishy champion. Um, her early game poke is going to be slightly mitigated as well now with the Scorch and airy damage now, so she'll be doing less DPS in lane now as well. Um, and she's just, the only thing she's viable for, in my opinion, is her ulti. And nine times out of ten, you have to do a flash ult. So your ultis are generally dependent on if your flash is up or not as well, which isn't suitable really in, in, in a support, to be honest. The Janna and the Alistair are another picks that could possibly creep higher. Um, Janna is one of those champions where her, she actually has decent lane harass with her W in laning phase. And she always will have incredible peel. But she is very squishy in lane. Um, and she doesn't really... In Soda Q, you if you play Janna... For example, you are very, very, very dependent on your AD carry. It's extremely difficult to roam around the map. So in this Soda Q tier list, it's it her impact in games is a lot lower than what may be what it may seem to be with her kit. Because her kit she has great heal, she has a great appeal, and her lane damage is okay with the W harassment, although a bit risky. But she just falls. She just falls flat generally most of the time because she doesn't have much control over the, over the game. It's more of a reactionary into reacting into how the enemy comes onto your team. Alistair is a very good laning champion. However, he falls extremely flat after you leave the laning phase. Um, as Alistair, you have to get kills in lane, um, and then even then. Um, there is still going to be a decent amount of damage in the game to to make Alistair extremely clunky to play because once you go in, that's it. And um, he's just like sitting there and he's inevitably going to die. So we're going to move up to the A tier list now. Uh, here we have um, a couple of champions that have been slightly affected by this patch. Uh, Bard, I have moved from the back of the A tier list all the way to the front, and I'm considering pushing him to S. It depends on how Electrocute works out. Bard has always been a really weird champion in terms of what things to take on him, what runes, what items to go. With the Electrocute change, he will be doing less damage on his burst, but I'll be able to do it as twice as often. Um, which for Bard in particular, being able to, it's extremely easy to land an electrocute proc from range. Auto attack with a meep already applies two, and then you just have to do a Q, and then it's ins it's it's insane damage. And now if you can do that more often in the laning phase, <clears throat> it's definitely going to be one to keep your eye on. His build pathing is always really wonky. But if you are able to land your electrocute procs in lane to do decent harassment, I can see a bard being pretty decent to be honest. Um, it's definitely one champion. I'm going to be experimenting a lot this uh, patch with the electrocute change. Leona is another champion who received a small buff. She has uh, her W, her her aura has been um, buffed so that it has a reduced cooldown. I think this change isn't anything dramatic. It's not going to see her move anywhere in particular. She's always going to be very good between bronze, high silver, low gold. She's a very good champion to learn how to roam on as well. So if that's something you're working on, Leon is always going to be a really nice champion to learn the basics on how to roam around the map. Um, I think she's more useful than Alistair, especially because she has a range AOE uh, uh, CC effect. Whereas Alistair always has to commit, Leona can just throw that out there, and if it misses, she can opt in to go in or, or not. So you have that option of being able to full in or not, whereas Alistair is just all in or nothing, basically. So that's why she's slightly higher up than Alistair. Karma, strong laning phase, weaker uh, mid-game onwards. With the less damage in the lane now, 
is something another champion to keep your eye on. Scorch and the airy being nerfed a bit. It's just something you get, we're going to have to keep our eye on. I don't think there's the damage reduction on Scorch and Aerie is too crazy. But I, she's never going to be an S tier champion unless she gets some decent buffs coming in. Um, and she is T to tottering between tier A and tier B. Um, I think she's just about an, an, an A right now. But we'll have to keep an eye on it and see what the damage situation is in lane. Lulu is a champion that you should only be playing with a hyper carry, and when played with a hyper carry, it's 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 decent. So, um, any if you do play Lulu with anyone else other than the hyper carry, she goes right down to like a B or a C. To be honest, uh, Vega I've pushed down with the reduced reduction again in the uh, laning phase damage. Um, his poke is going to be near nothing, so his. E, his cage is obviously going to be his most important spell in the lane, and it always kind of has been. But think of it as a wonky fiddlesticks with a decent execute as well, though, to bear in mind. But he is fun to play, particularly as an eight in the AD role. I do highly suggest that if you also feel to play Vega, try out Vega AD. Um, I think if you can play Vega with something like an AP carry, like a Zyra or a Brand, um, it keeps them confined in that cage, and then you can AoE them down while they're in the um, cage, which could be a nice option. But because you didn't see too many AP ADs right now, um, his viability is slowly falling. Um, with more people inclining to still play the traditional AD carries right now. Vagar is falling down slightly. But it's crank I've moved up slightly. Um I think he has Technically be unaffected by this change, but damage overall has been reduced slightly. And Blitzcrank's damage has always been respectable, and since his damage hasn't been changed at all, I do feel like he has an effect if it had a slight buff. If you do make a mistake, um, you're not going to be harassed as much. Um, it's just very small little buffs for Blitzcrank, and he's always kind of been the scary champion. If you're really good on Blitzcrank and able to hold your Q for a decent amount of time, then you know you can you can force opponents to miss CS or get scared. And there's different different little tricks you can do on Blitzcrank. It's definitely when you get higher up into the ladder, it does become a lot harder to play. But he's still definitely viable and still decently strong as long as you're not picking into um, counter picks such as like Zyra plants or Morgana Black Shield or Sever. I think he's still a decent sort of champion. Brom is probably the best legit tank support. Um, I still feel you'd have to go minion dematerialize on your secondary to be able to farm properly in the lane. And he's a really good counter to Zyra Khan as uh, Zyra, as feathers get put right in front of Brom's wall. Um, and it reduces Zyra's damage by an incredible amount. Also, Brom's wall blocks things like on ulti and you know other projectiles as well, like that as well. So it's it's something to bear in mind in very select situations, but if picked properly, he's actually a really solid tank, and it's one of the few instances where it feels nice to play the tank. Um, ideally, you want to play it with something as well as with a Lucian uh, or some very fast attacks to get off the, your passive. Maybe with more than one AD on your, your team, auto attack on your team as well to help get those passes off a little bit quicker. But he is a champion that you need to bear in mind of both team comps to get the most effectiveness from it. But he can be very good too. Now Lux, I've nudged down considerably from S plus to, uh, to A. With the airy and the Scorch nerfs, which will reduce our laning harass by a fair margin. And honestly, I haven't had, I had more success two patches ago. Last patch, Lux, from personal experience, something doesn't feel quite right. I can't put my finger on it. Um, 
She's generally a, usually a pretty fun champion to play. But something's not quite right um, on her right now to compete with the other AP supports. Um, so it's something that I'm thinking about on the luck side of things. I think if you do catch someone up with a Q ulti, it's always going to do a ridiculous amount of damage. It's... It's just a champion where if you miss your Q um, in a team fight, it's one of those things where if you miss your Q and your ulti, it always feels really bad, and then that's most of your ability taken out in team, team fights. Um, whereas with, the, for example, the Zara, if you do miss your Q, you still your seeds will still pop up plants and will also attack the enemy as well, so you're not punished as harshly for missing your abilities. Um, so that might be why... Um, but it's something I'm honestly, it's my, probably my biggest question mark right now um, on this list is the Lux. Um, so I feel that she's anywhere between like an S and, and an A right now. Uh, it's honestly dependent on how you personally feel about playing the champion, how much success you've had recently. Um, and if you haven't had much success recently, I'd suggest uh, playing one or two of the other AP supports. <clears throat> right, now we're moving up to the S tier list. We've got Morgana, Bran, Rakan, Thresh, and Fiddlesticks. Bran's damage will be reduced ever so slightly by Scorch. There isn't much else that impacts him because I generally, like personally, like to go comment on Bran anyway, so it's not affecting my playstyle at least anyway. However, if you do play Airy Bran, you probably will want to reconsider more to go into comment now. Rakan is a champion I don't quite want to classify as a tank. Um, he's more of like a caster tank. Is That's probably the best way to describe him. He has received two nerfs in regards to his HP and his armor. And when he, his main issue was when he goes in, he is extremely vulnerable to dying extremely quickly. I think his ult and his W combo are just so good that it doesn't really matter too much. Um, but it is something to bear in, line, line, uh, bear in mind. He has received those nerfs, but damage has also been reduced slightly, so he will probably feel about the same squishiness as before. But he definitely won't feel any tank here. <laughs> Thresh is one that you could also argue that is tankier, but I feel like he's more of a playmaker rather than an actual tank himself. So his lantern is incredible for solo queue if your teammates cle uh, click it. If you're duo with a jungler, then you get extra bonus points for that as well because you'll have this Thresh plus a jungler is probably the easiest way to gank bot lane. Um, so... In solo slash duo queue, Thresh can be incredibly powerful when worked with your jungler. Also, you have the roaming potential as well on the Thresh of mobility boots. So there's something to bear in mind as well. Overall, pretty solid champion. Um, does require a fair amount of skill though with your hook and your E. But if you can get those down on a consistent basis... You should have some decent success on Thresh, in all honesty. Um, he's definitely a decent solo queue champion for sure. Fiddlesticks. Now, <laughs> he's been seeing some reduced play lately. I'm not really sure why. He's still actually pretty good with his CC. But now with damage reduced, his E is even less important now in lane. Um, just mainly for the silence. And he will be less vulnerable to burst ever so slightly with the amount of damage reduction going through as well. So it's kind of weird. So he's definitely just going to be a CC machine, um, even more so than before. So maybe going some avenues where you're actually a little bit more tankier rather than going for just straight for AP items is probably the best as Zonyas and then maybe into some other tank items might be something to consider, but being like a tanky CCing fiddlesticks is definitely viable still and still incredibly strong in team fights as well. Fear is incredibly strong. Um, so he's still definitely decent in solo queue. Morgana, still S tier, 
not really too affected by the nerf from last patch by um, the mana cost increase on the black shield. Um, once again, she will be suffering ever so slight damage reduction in lane because of the Scorch and Airy nerfs. But generally, her binding is still very good damage when you do land with it. Black Shield is an incredibly powerful tool as well to block a jungle coming into CC. Um, her ult does fall flat later in the into the game. Um, she's definitely like an early to mid game champion. But overall, she's always going to be a pretty safe pick if you're blind pick right now. So if you're blind picking into the not knowing what the enemy team have, Morgana is always going to be a decent safe pick. Now pushing into the S+, plus, right to the very top. Not too much movement there. Last patch we had Nami, Soraka and Pike up there as well. But instead of the Lux, we swapped the Lux and the Zyra together now. Um, I will definitely urge uh, people to go more towards the Electrocute Zyra. Because you should be able to get this procs off more often. Um, this is, so with bearing in mind, this is now S plus Zyra if you go Electrocute now. It does require you to be able to land your ease consistently but if you get good on that um your dps through the lane should go up a lot higher um because you better get those electric procs off twice as often so yeah i can see that her being the strongest damage dealer right now on bot side right now pike i would list as probably the best support champion to play right now still even though his couple of things in domination has been changed on his damage side, it will reduce the effect of his electrocute build. Uh, you're gonna have to play the laning phase, so you're gonna want to do like Q if you can Q an enemy, say if they're 100% the HP and you know you're not gonna kill them in that one that first burst, you're gonna have to Q, uh, pull. Um, and then auto attack, auto attack E or E then auto attack, um, and then back off. So you'd be using it as a more of like a pokey pike in the laning phase. And then as you transition through later towards the game, um, I think that the electrocute damage fall off and little bit of damage here and there on a couple of things like the lethality and the cheap shot shouldn't make too much of a difference. I still think he's going to be this really good because of his his roaming is 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 just uncomparable to any other support right now, and I think that's the strongest thing in his kit. It's not for being really so much about the damage; it's always been about locking people down, the roaming, um, and the finishing people off with your R, which is kind of why you lean towards electrocute anyways, because the scaling on his ulti is decent when you get ahead and when you grab BF sword early it can be amazing Soraka now there's less damage in lane and the same with the Nami actually the, now there's less damage in lane their damage on the airy and the scorch has gone down but it does mean that if they do get caught out they're e going to be even more annoying to lock down and kill Soraka probably even more so um Soraka is generally is pretty hard champion to kill, especially if you aid, if their AD has heal and the Soraka has barrier. Even with Groover, Groover Swoons, locking her down properly is such a pain in the butt. And now you could now harassment has gone down slightly in lane on most of the champions. I think it's going to be a close call. I in terms of Enchanter, it's very close call between Nami and Soraka, who's best right now. I think they're both incredibly good in solo queue right now. Um, I don't think I could put one above the other. Soraka has much better sustain, whereas Tsunami has much better control. Um, but they're both really good. They're both really, really good enchanters. <clears throat> so if you definitely are a fan of playing enchanters, definitely choose one of those two to, to learn a master. Because for some reason, they are skirting around the changes that have been constantly happen happening over the last few patches. Um, and they keep being indirectly buffed. Um, I don't know how long this is going to keep on going on for. Um, and I don't see how Riot can change it because they are trying to reduce damage anyway. So I think Nami and Soraka, my prediction is, is that Nami and Soraka will still be really nice. 
um, as the season closes and you might start seeing tanks start coming up the ranks as damage gets reduced more and more throughout the game. Um, that's, that's the main issue really with playing tanks right now in Soda Q is that you, you, you can get bursted down at the very start of the lane phase incredibly easy and then you're just left there to do nothing. And if you have to take Relic Shield as well then you're even more predictable when you can last hit a minion as well unless you have minion dematerializer. So once they start reducing damage more in League, expect um, champions that like Pike and maybe the AP supports might start to suffer, but the tanks and the enchanters will start creeping up again. Right, I hope you enjoyed my 8.16 support tier list. If you did enjoy the video, please give that a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment below on your thoughts on a tier list and if, if you've spotted something out of place. Um, Make sure you, you uh, call me out on it. I'm definitely interested in, in what you guys are thinking of. Um, special shout out again to my sponsor, Rocket. Once again, you can find the code down below, uh, which will give you 10% off any Rocket gear that you'd like to purchase. I am actually using the um, Rocket AMO gear. If you're interested in what I'm using, it's a keyboard and mouse. I've been using it now for the last three and a half months. And the sponsorship is a new requirement too. So it's not something that I'm trying to flog off to you guys they are the gen the products are genuinely really good and if i had to recommend one product of them all in particular is definitely the cone i used to use like a logitech g5 something <laughs> um and this is definitely um like a similar shape to that but it definitely feels a lot nicer to use it's definitely a step up from that i would say um so that's one product that in particular i would highly recommend you look into um so yeah, thank you again um, for watching the video. And if you need uh, coaching sessions or uh, gameplay videos from my twitch.tv stream um, slash Bizzleberry, then have a feel free to browse through the channel and um, hope you find something that, that you like. Bye.